The title for the show is called um, Domain, and that's also the title for the wall painting that's in the Long Gallery. So we could talk a little bit about how that originated and how that feeds into your recent work. Um, well, since we started working together, um, at the heart of our work has been an interest in architecture and um, the way, um, in a sense, we've been exploring the way we can discover things about ourselves in our surroundings. And we started off by looking at architecture, interiors, furniture, and for many years we've worked with these themes, but over time we've sort of expanded out from that and we're looking at other systems of um, organisation, other systems where relationships between people are evident. And we've looked at um, aviation networks and recently we've been looking at the internet and we see all of these uh, um, systems as domains within, within which behaviour is organised, within which people have relationships, within which we can discover things about ourselves. Mm -hmm. As the world gets more complicated, I think we have more and more need of abbreviations to try and make sense of the world, to make simpler solutions to things mm -hmm. as we're bombarded with information. In the wall painting we, we have the, uh, the, the prefix, if you like, of, of MK, but it, it must have been interesting for you in relation to the whole history of Milton Keynes as this um, idea of a networked city, if you like, and also the grid system, which is very much archetypal to Milton Keynes. How, how interesting has it been for you to have an exhibition here and to work within that kind of context? Yeah, it's been yeah. very interesting. I think um, one of the things about, um, about people and, um, and about architecture is that um, you know, architecture is evidence of our ability, our will to plan events. And coming to a city like um, Milton Keynes, um, it's very unusual in the context of Britain or Europe um, in that it is a city planned from a zero point in the very recent past. Um, so it's very interesting to look at um, a city where people have tried to accommodate everybody's needs in a very positive sense. And it's interesting to, you know, one sort of struggles with understanding how people, how a city like Milton Keynes tries to cater for ideals mm. and whether it meets those ideals. Mm. You've also um, literally put a piece of work into the city with the flags at Station Square and um, I'm just wondering if you could talk a bit about the title for that piece and where that comes from, who's afraid of red, black and blue and, and the nature of that piece of work as well. In a way, the nature of the piece, it's about the architecture of information, um, particularly now um, with um, the internet mm. and the codes that are surrounding us, some familiar, some not so, but this language that we see um, is like a poetry of places often um, that we become more familiar with as we use that language. Mm. Yeah, so um, the, the flags are, uh, have a grid design within the the grid are codes uh, or letters or acronyms and um, of course the grid is, is a basic tool for designing and planning space uh, and uh, you know one sees it everywhere in Belton Keynes so and, and it's something that we've used in our work so we felt a natural affinity and uh, we, we felt a natural um, you know sense that you know the context was right for this piece the content of the piece uh, beyond the grid comes well for several years now we've been looking at the codes used in aviation systems for identifying destinations and um, we see these codes as kind of again another kind of architecture an architecture at a more abstracted level but Nevertheless, what's interesting about it is that, is that although it's very abstract, it's actually very, very concrete. It's mm. very non-fiction. It's very much about uh, specific realities. Although at first sight, it looks quite abstract, and you have to sort of uh, unravel it and decode it a bit. Um, 
So we, we started using these code words and um, uh, there are three letter codes and uh, uh, some of them are very well known like JFK for New York and CBG for Paris Airport, LHR for London Heathrow. Um, and some of them make up quite poetic, SIN, S-I-N for Singapore. Um, Rio is one we know well, MEX for Mexico. So there are all kinds of different levels of abstraction and recognition which we like very much about it, but at the same time it's very actual. Mm -hmm. And then in time, of course, more quickly, we noticed that um, we started noticing, noticing codes everywhere. And um, we travelled to Afghanistan on a research commission for the Imperial War Museum. And when we arrived there, we were amazed that in this broken down country that was suffering from drought, where um, nothing worked and you know, people had spent 25 years, in, 23 years in isolation, suddenly there were codes everywhere. But they were the codes of the international. Um, aid agencies, the NGOs, and the United Nations agencies, and we realised that this, you know Afghanistan was f being fitted back into an international network, and that this kind of blanket of organisation that we find expressed in code words were had extended there already and was already literally covering the country. And, and following so, that, we, we, we started working then with um, the codes of banned organisations, liberation mm -hmm. armies and security agencies. And that's the, the flip side, mm -hmm. if you like, of, of the work that mm -hmm. we were working on and saw with the NGOs. Equally a kind of common language. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. Hence the title, Who's Afraid of yeah. Red, Black and Blue. Yeah. Yeah. The, I mean, in, in parallel, if you like, to that um, exploration, what you call this global architecture, has been this... Uh, more of a use of, of computer and digital information within your own work, which in a way, you know, we look at your practice 15 years ago or, or, or what have you, there has been a, a shift there. How, what is that shift in the, in the technologies that you're, you're using now? What, what's been the impact of working more within this, the, the digital framework that you, you have been doing? Undoubtedly, yes. I mean, I think, you know, as I said, you always respond to um, the world around you and um, um, so it's partly that, and, it's, and the other you know, major factor which uh, affects one's work is the tools that are available to you. And so, you know, we're very interested in using today's tools now uh, and looking at the issues and the, the context that we're in at the moment. And that's kind of exemplified, if you like, in a piece of work in the gallery, Plunged in a Stream, which is a collaboration between yourselves and, and BT. Yes, for us that was you know, a very interesting um, movement, move forward really, to actually work at their research um, de department um, in Martlesham in Suffolk and use really high-end equipment which was being made as you use it. Um, so in a sense you're working and collaborating with others who have that knowledge but we're able to use our ideas with their knowledge and put it together in context, if you like, and take it a step further and refine it and hopefully make and improve um, one's work. Mm. And this, this is a piece of work that was made originally in Brussels, in a historical palace, and now you brought it here in, into Milton Keynes. Yes, in a sense, the sites couldn't be more different, and yet there is a connection. I mean, there's a connection also with the station where the flags are hung mm. at this point and the collection, connection to, to Brussels and the way that people travel now between places and how that ease of travel and the speed of travel and the collapsing of time is connecting us all. Mm. You're, um, it, it seems as, as the practice has developed from the architectural models as sculpture, the furniture and to this recent work, it seems like your, your work is becoming everywhere and nowhere at the same time, it kind of begin to dissolve into all these fragments of life that, um, you know, previously there's a new direction in that area of how you're developing your practice. Yes, I think sometimes it feels, you know, as though our work is also a kind of network and, mm. you know, we, we've, for years we've worked in series, you know, we would start with a theme or an idea or some element and we would develop it or, um, sort of continue it and break it out in, in series and, and make um, new examples of it to sort of explore the theme further and so these series would be sort of nodes if you like in our work which we've continued to sort of connect them up and link them up. But I think the thing about it is that art is um, you have to extend it 
um, from mm. that point and take it one step further. And um, that's hopefully what we're doing with this show.